Hello everyone! Last week, we have discussed basic concepts about computer systems, computer architecture and organization, and embedded systems and microcontrollers. After understanding the basic concepts, you are now ready to learn one popular architecture. This week, we are going to discuss the ARM instruction set architecture. So, why ARM? ARM, at first, stands for Acorn Risk Machine after the company that first developed the ARM processors in the 1980s, which is the Acorn Computers Limited. It later changed to Advanced Risk Machine and is still used today. ARM processors and microcontrollers are most popular in digital embedded systems. They are used in industrial instrument control systems, mobile devices, wireless network, sensors, and many more. In 2010 alone, 6.1 billion ARM-based processors were used in smartphones, digital TVs, and mobile computers. And as of 2019, 150 billion ARM processors has already been produced. I could really say that this architecture is widely used on different applications. To give you some examples, here is an iPhone 11 motherboard. It uses an A13 Bionic 64-bit SoC, which uses six ARM V8.3a processor cores. Another example is the Amazon Echo. It uses the DM3725 digital media processor from Texas Instrument, which uses ARM Cortex-A8 processors. If you are using Fitbit Flex, this device uses an ultra-low-power ARM Cortex M3 microcontroller. Another type of ultra-low-power ARM Cortex M3 microcontroller is used in Nest Learning Thermostat. Samsung Galaxy Gear and Samsung Gear Fit both use ARM Cortex M4 microcontrollers. Even the Oculus Virtual Reality device uses an ARM Cortex-M0 microcontroller. ARM has processors for many applications. The Cortex-A family supports operating systems and is used for high-performance applications such as smartphones, tablets, and smart TVs. The Cortex-R family supports real-time, high-performance, high-reliability processing. These are used in aircraft controls, airbags, and other mission-critical controls. ARM Cortex-M family, on the other hand, are microcontrollers. Their main goal is to lower the cost of the device while still providing high performance. In our course, we are going to use a microcontroller, so we will focus more on the Cortex-M family. Does ARM uses von Neumann architecture or Harvard architecture? Well, they use both. So some microcontrollers use von Neumann and some use Harvard architecture. Why? Because both have their pros and cons. Choosing which one depends on which performance parameter you want to trade off. Now let's go to the instruction set, which is our main topic for this week. In the ARM architecture, all instructions are 32 bits long and most of them can be executed in one cycle. ARM is a load store architecture, so data processing instructions act only on registers. Data from the memory are transferred to the registers using memory access instructions. Other details on this slide will also be discussed in the next discussions. ARM registers have 32 bits each. In user mode, we can access registers R0 to R15, where R0 to 12 are the general purpose registers, R13 is the stack pointer register, R14 is the link register, and R15 is the program counter. There are other special purpose registers that can be accessed on user mode, but we will not deal with them today. The general purpose registers are grouped into low registers and high registers. 
the low registers can be accessed by any instruction, whereas the high registers can only be accessed by some instruction. The stack pointer register holds the address of the stack registers where we can save important values before executing a subroutine. The link register, on the other hand, holds the return address where the program will return after executing a subroutine. Oh, lastly, the program counter holds the memory address of the current instruction. Don't worry, all of this will make sense later after further discussions. We have four groups of assembly instructions. We have the arithmetic and logic instructions, which processes the data, the data movement instructions, which can access the memory, the compare and branch instructions, which controls the flow of operation of the program, and other miscellaneous instructions like directives. In our discussion, we will only focus on the first three group of instructions. It's up to you if you will further study about the miscellaneous instructions. ARM instructions use the following general format. The labels are place markers marking the memory address of the instruction next to it. Labels must be unique because they are used by branch instructions to instruct the processor on which instruction to execute next. Next is the mnemonic. This is the name of the instruction or the operation to be performed by the processor. The operands are the values that are manipulated during the operation. Operands can be a value on the register or a constant. Some instructions need only two operands. Some only need one and some doesn't need any operand at all. There are other special instructions that need four operands. You'll know them when you encounter them. Normally, operand 1 is the des destination address. Operand 2 is usually a register and the first source operand. Operand 3, however, can be a lot of things. It can be a register, an immediate number, or a constant, a register shifted to a constant number of bits, or a register plus an offset, which is used for memory access. And then there's the comment. Everything after the semicolon is a comment. Use this to explain your intentions or assumptions in adding an instruction or a group of instructions. This is an example of an ARM instruction. Please take note that not all instructions require a label and a comment. The label target is used to mark the memory address of the add instruction beside it. And comments are only used to explain the not-so-obvious details in words. For this example, the comment is a bad one because it's just repeating what is already obvious. A better comment should give more detail about the instruction, like to increment an angle by a step size. These are other examples of ARM instructions. Notice that they are all add instructions with different operands. We'll talk more about these instructions in the next succeeding videos.